Hello, MedTech Strategist Virtual Conference. My name is Dave Uffer, the VP of MedTech at Alera Health, a global strategy advisory with a comprehensive MedTech practice. CMS has recently announced guidance on reimbursement for breakthrough designation. We felt this very important to delve deeper into the proposal through this session. I have here joining me, Mary McNamara, our Vice President of Regulatory Affairs and Deepak Sahu, our Vice President of Health Economics and Market Access. Through this session, we will cover three key topic areas, as you can see on the slide at the bottom. Can my device be classified as breakthrough designation, which Mary will lead? Deepak will take the subjects of what does this mean for my innovative technology and what do I need to consider during and beyond the four-year coverage period? And with that, I'll turn it over to Mary McNamara. Thank you, Dave. So I'm going, to, I'm going to cover the Breakthrough Device Designation Program today. What that program is, it's a voluntary program for certain medical devices, as well as device-led combination products that provide for a more effective treatment or diagnosis of life-threatening or irreversibly debilitating diseases or conditions. What this program that FDA has initiated what it does for patients is it will provide them, along with healthcare, healthcare providers, with timely access to these medical devices, these novel medical devices, by speeding up their development, the assessment, and the review, while also preserving the typical regulatory and statutory standards for PMAs, 510Ks, and de novos. This breakthrough device designation program replaces what used to be the expedited access pathway and priority review for medical devices. So what are the benefits to a medical device manufacturer of getting a breakthrough device designation? It offers an expedited opportunity to interact with FDA's experts through several different program options to efficiently address those topics as they arise during the pre-market review phase. It'll also help manufacturers receive feedback from FDA and identify areas of concerns and then agreement in a timely manner. And manufacturers can also expect prioritized review of their submissions, whether that be 510K, de novo, or a PMA. What kind of devices are eligible for the Breakthrough Device Designation Program? The criteria are as follows. So they have to meet this. The device has to provide a more effective treatment or diagnosis of life-threatening or irreversibly debilitating human disease or conditions. They have to meet that criteria. They also have to meet one of the four following criteria. They have to represent a breakthrough technology. There can be no approved or cleared alternatives that exist. Or if a, an alternative does exist, it has to offer a significant advantage over that existing approved or cleared alternative. And the device availability has to be in the best interest of patients. So when should a medical device manufacturer request a breakthrough device designation? This should be uh, applied or submitted to FDA prior to your marketing system submission, typically in the pre-submission phase. And how does the process work? Well, the process works by submitting a designation request for breakthrough device through the QSUB program. It should only be submitted through the QSUB program. It should not be submitted while you have a 510K or a de novo 510K or a PMA pending. The types of information that are required in a breakthrough device designation QSUB are device description, proposed indications for use, any regulatory history that the device may have, how the device meets the criteria that I just described previously for a breakthrough device, and then what is going to be the type of submission you're going to submit to the FDA um, for pre-market pre approval, uh, whether that's a 510K, de novo 510K, or a PMA. And the time frame for communication with FDA after you submit your breakthrough device designation is that within about 30 days of your submission, you will most likely be uh, contacted by FDA with potentially some questions from them. By about 60 days, you will have your response by through FDA 
whether that is a grant of your breakthrough device designation or a rejection. So in total, it's about a 60 day review time for FDA to review that breakthrough device designation. And then what are the benefits, what are the advantages that a medical device manufacturer can expect if they are granted a breakthrough device designation? Well, number one, you can choose to interact with FDA to obtain feedback on your device, again, through the QSUB program. And how it differs from just a typical pre-sub is that about halfway through a pre-sub uh, review period, so typically in about 30 days, FDA will initiate what's called sprint discussions. And what that means is those are just discussions that are interactive with FDA to discuss data development plans, testing, or requests for clinical protocol um, information. So these sprint discussions take place early on during the pre-submission process. And again, as I mentioned previously, the company will also receive a prioritized review for your future regulatory submission. Again, whether that's another QSUB, an IDE, or a 510K, Genova 510K, or PMA. So those are the benefits of the breakthrough device designation uh, should you be lucky enough to be granted one of those from FDA. And then just lastly, I'll close with a couple of examples of recent uh, medical devices and actually digital uh, devices as well that have been granted the breakthrough device designation. One is from Medtronic called the Tyrex Absorbable Antibacterial Driveline Wrap which is basically a medical device that reduces complications in patients receiving a ventric ventricular assist device. Another device that received breakthrough designation is something called the Detour System from PQ Bypass. And what that is, it's the first device to permit fully percutaneous femoral popliteal bypass to treat extremely long complex blockages in the superficial femoral artery. And then lastly, there is a digital uh, system that has been approved for the Breakthrough Device Designation Program, and that's a machine learning based diagnostic startup from Decina. And what that product does, it's called the Provice algorithm. It is designed to predict acute kidney injury before clinical symptoms appear. So in early testing, this provides digital uh, application de detected uh, kidney issues more than a day before the patients exhibited symptoms of kidney damage or impaired function. Those, so those are a couple of the, of the uh, examples of recent uh, approvals for the breakthrough device designation. I hope this has been helpful. Please reach out to any of us at Alira Health if you need any further information or need assistance in uh, drafting a breakthrough device designation application. And now I'm going to hand it over to Deepak Sahu to speak about uh, the next topic. Thank you, May. Thank you, May. So on, on, sep on September 1, 2020, the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Risk Services, CMS, proposed a new rule that would dramatically change the coverage determinants for a breakthrough device program. According to the proposed rule, as soon as the FDA grants a breakthrough device designation, the coverage follows automatically for the next four years. What does that mean is when this proposed rule comes into effect, a separate pathway will be established called Medicare Coverage Innovative Technology, MCIT pathway in which the devices who got the breakthrough designation get enrolled and can apply to be in part of that particular pathway. Having in a part of that particular pathway, they will be determined as necessary and reasonable for application onto Medicare population. Now, let's look at the history, what used to happen prior to as Mary rightly mentioned, there are a lot of avenues in FDA when you are going for a breakthrough device designation. So it was an expedited pathway that was available. But once the FDA pathway was cleared, the devices had to go through either a national coverage determinant called NCD of Medicare, 
or a local coverage determinant called LCDs determined by Mac. And that was a wait period. People generally used to call it as a valley of death because a breakthrough designation, although approved by FDA, has no mechanism to get reimbursed and was not accessible to larger population of seniors uh, in the US. What this proposed rule will do once it comes into effect, uh, a national coverage determination will be established for the device after you get your pre-market authorization from FDA for a period of four years. At the end of the four years, you have to prove yourself to be medically necessary and reasonable. Um, the CMS will look at your data. Um, it is highly recommended that you follow a particular pathway before uh, you go in front of the CMS and apply one year prior to that. CMS in the MCIT program has proposed all the breakthrough device designated devices who get their uh, status um, after have to apply within their on the third on the third year um, a national coverage determinant or local coverage determinant filings to see whether that particular technology has delivered of and added value to the population as what is as what it has it has proclaimed or proclaimed during the breakthrough designation. What does that mean uh, for the medical devices? Uh, currently. Uh, it has opened up a path for innovation. It has also opened up a path for access into innovations. Uh, previously, only having a medical, only having an FDA approval through a breakthrough designation was not sufficient of getting technologies into the patient bedside. Uh, this rule uh, will facilitate um, bringing those technologies accessible to the seniors as soon as possible. It also puts a burden on the medical devices to use those four years uh, quite efficiently and effectively to collect the data from a health economic and outcome research perspective that will help them determine or will help them uh, defend the value uh, for which they have been granted a breakthrough designation uh, pathway. <laughs> Uh, lastly, uh, but not the least, uh, we all have to be cognizant that this is right now a proposed rule has not come into effect. Uh, CMS is still gathering feedback uh, from the industry on how to move ahead. But um, there, ha there has been industry groups uh, like AdvaMed who have supported this move uh, in order to promote innovations and make those technologies accessible. One word of caution, and at Alira Health, as you rightly see, David, Mary, and myself here in the call, uh, we look at the device from an entire strategic perspective. Uh, so if there are breakthrough devices, and if you feel that your devices can be classified into breakthrough designation, the first pathway is always to consult a regulatory consultant and see whether you have been approved or whether there is a pathway in which you can go for the approval and definitely reach out to your clinical sites or your clinical studies or health economic experts to develop a model around um, around the around the path they should follow in the us uh, one of the health economic models and the value analysis framework that has been proposed by isa recently from 2018 to 2022 will serve as a better guideline in which in the short term, you have to have an infrastructure to look at what are your budget impact or cost minimization strategies are. And in the long term, you have to look at patient, patient reported outcomes and long term patient benefits so as to make um, all the stakeholders, including CMS, comfortable of your value proposition. Having said those, uh, I will hand over the discussion to Dave uh, to ask us some questions in this domain, which may be lingering in the mind of different technologies.